1968 Night of the Living Dead would hit the scene, becoming one of the greatest horror films ever made. But a failed copyright issue would cause anybody to be able to release the film or recreate the film. But in a bizarre turn of events, John Russo and George Romero would get together to create the Night of the Living Dead remake in 1990, directed by George's protege, Tom Savini. As we've seen, the 2000s have shown a resurgence of some Living Dead films. Night of the Living Dead would be no exception when Night of the Living Dead 3D, starring Sid Haig, would come out. And after many years, I finally watched the other Night of the Living Dead remake. So for the viewers that are keeping score at home, you'll remember me doing some of these deep dive video essays on films like Return of the Living Dead Necropolis. And you might even remember how this all started. Children of the Living Dead. You know, the mid-2000s were an era of movies that I'm getting more and more fascinated by as time goes on. It was really the first giant wave of the remake craze, but there were also movies that were trying to live in the legacy world of films like Night of the Living Dead or Return of the Living Dead. Now, if you haven't seen those two videos I did on Rave to the Grave and Necropolis, the fourth and fifth Return of the Living Dead films, please check those out. I was able to get a lot of information on those. Sometimes the way things appear are truly not how they were planned out. And while I was doing research for those movies, I kept remembering there was a Night of the Living Dead film that I owned that I never really watched before, but every time I saw it, I was like, huh, what is this? It's got Sid Haig on the front? Night of the Living Dead 3D. So I've been meaning to do a video on this for a while, and of course I watched the movie and we'll talk about it, but this is not necessarily something I need you to go out and watch, unless your interest is piqued, but to really give you my experience watching this film. Now as you guys know, I think one of the greatest horror films of all time is the original Night of the Living Dead. And I've also been very vocal, I'm a giant fan of the 1990 remake directed by Tom Savini. Now, if you guys are interested in that, the making of that film was a complete disaster. I read John Russo's book on the making of and the story of how the film came to be, and it was a doozy in more ways than one. Not only just Tom Savini being a little bit over his head, but George Romero and John Russo not exactly working together, as it were. Also, the fact that Menahem Golan, who just started 21st Century Pictures, didn't want to give anybody any money. But I digress. We'll save that story for a different day. Finally, I decided, let me go ahead and grab that DVD for Night of the Living Dead 3D. I looked at the back of the disc and I noticed it was 2006. So that told me one thing. Sid Haig was in popular demand at that time. He had just come off of The Devil's Rejects. I looked up the budget for this film, Night of the Living Dead 3D, and it clocked in around $750,000. I'd have to imagine probably close to a hundred grand went to Sid Haig himself. But that begs the question to me, is this film any good? They got a horror star at the time, but does that mean anything? Putting in this film was quite an interesting experience. So Night of the Living Dead 3D starts out differently than the remake or the original as it were. It shows the movie playing and pans out of a little TV at a gas station. This brother and sister are driving through and right away, you can tell the acting bar that we're working with here. Is it atrocious? It's a blend of passable and atrocious. Let's put it that way. I don't discredit these people at all. I'm not an actor. So sometimes I really don't like criticizing bad acting that much, like I could do a better job. But you could tell these were not highly trained, highly skilled professionals, as it were. The story starts to seemingly take a lot of the same roads that the original and remake did. But, interestingly enough, this film actually took some different turns that, despite the film not being this incredible work of art, I will give it a little bit of credit. Of course, you've got Sid Haig, who's running this mortician, and the bodies that are coming out, you'll notice, have, you know, holes in the chest like they were getting embalmed and things like that, and you start to wonder, some of these zombies have this particular look, which made me wonder, as I was watching this, is there something different going on? And let's take a second to talk about the look of the zombies. I'd have to say that a decent bit of the budget went towards the prosthetic makeup effects because, quite frankly, some of them didn't look half bad. There were some of those really cool Return of the Living Dead-esque designs, which are heavy, heavy prosthetics, where the skin tone is completely like blue or green and they have no hair, and the mangled teeth and eyes and almost claw-like hands that these zombies would have. And it was a decent little throwback to some of the 80s classics that I love especially Return of the Living Dead. Sid Haig is clearly the 
star of this movie, although he's literally not the star of the movie. I'd say he's in about 25 to 30 percent of the film. We get to a point in the film to where Sid Haig goes to the house that would seemingly be the house that you would have seen from the original or the remake and begins to explain just what the hell is going on. Of course, zombies are running around left and right, but he kind of lets us know this is not a mystery as to what's going on. Well, it is, but it's not totally a mystery. Now, I do want to say that this is a little bit of a spoiler alert, so if you want to stop here and fast forward to a part to where I'm past this, go right ahead. But, you know, I think a lot of you probably don't care. Sid Haig reveals that his father was the mortician and he took over, and Sid Haig always had a problem with doing cremation. It was just too much for him to handle, and he has a phobia of flames, as it were. So he started stockpiling bodies at this morgue that he was supposed to be cremating. Not only that, he started getting shipments of stuff from different organizations to cremate and burn that he kind of got deals to, you know, deal with from them. So they wouldn't have to go through the proper chains or authorities to get rid of. And some of this stuff was chemicals, if you will. And apparently at one point, some of these chemicals got infused with some of the embalming fluid which, you named it, started reanimating these bodies. It's kind of a wonky idea, but like I said, I'll give him a little bit of credit for actually trying to have a reason. Uh, I like a good mystery, but you know what? They already did a remake that was identical, so why not try to do a little bit something else? Now, the majority of the cast in this film is ridiculously hokey. But there's this one guy, I forget the character's name, you'll have to forgive me, that has some of the most hysterical dialogue it's ridiculous how, I don't even want to say bad, but just, it's ridiculous. But there's an evenness to all the mediocre acting, if you will. And I think there's something to be said there for me in terms of enjoying a film that has less than great acting in it. If there's one bad apple in the bunch, to me it kind of takes me out more when you look at a film like Leprechaun 2. The love interest in that film is one of the worst actresses I'd ever seen. But in this film, everybody kind of told the line of just trying their best, but not really having the chops yet. There is one great moment in the film that I will put over. When Sid Haig gets to the house where everybody's at and sits them all down and gives the speech about why this is all happening. His delivery is on point and he delivers, quite frankly, a pretty damn good speech. So watching Night of the Living Dead 3D, I wanted to go in and do this legit. I own the Night of the Living Dead 3D DVD release and mind you, if you get this, it's only 3D. So I pulled out the glasses, which are in fact themed Night of the Living Dead 3D. I put them on and I began my journey. And in about 10 seconds, I stopped. This is no way to watch 3D movies, especially in the comfort of your own home. I don't know how big of a theatrical run this movie had, but uh, I hope it was some kind of IMAX or true 3D. So unfortunately, I thought, I can't do it. I can't watch this movie because this is only 3D on the disc. But then I remembered something. Walmart back in the day used to have these five, six, seven, eight movie pack, horror movie packs. And then it clicked. I have this, the horror collection, which is quite frankly a great collection. You've got Bride of Reanimator, Beyond Reanimator, Return of the Living Dead 3, the two four and five Living Dead films, and lo and behold, we had Night of the Living Dead 3D, and right onto here it says the 2D version. I was able to watch this film and not be nauseated quickly. Was it a good looking DVD? Not really. But then again, this is a six movie pack, so I can't really tell you how much better this would be because if you try to watch it in 3D without glasses, it looks even worse. Do I think there's an audience for Night of the Living Dead 3D? Maybe. I think that there is going to be a number of people that will say, you know what, it's bad, but I have a fun time watching it. Which also begs the question, how does this movie stack to some of those other, you know, bargain bin Living Dead films I've talked about, like Children of the Living Dead, or Rave to the Grave, or Return of the Living Dead Necropolis? Well, I would actually put it at the upper echelon. It had a decent budget of 750 grand, so it's passable, it's watchable. I'd highly recommend watching it with friends to get a chuckle out of, but it's a decent bargain bin movie, if I do say so myself. Nowhere near good, but it's an interesting piece of history to say the least. 
Getting information on this film was kind of sparse, but I do know that in 2012 they apparently made a prequel that I remember seeing at my video store that is still open. And I'm gonna have to go back and try to buy that DVD to maybe do a review on that as well. But guys, continuing off in the bargain bin Living Dead films, we have now tackled Night of the Living Dead 3D. I'd say if you have it and you've never popped it in, let that curiosity get the better of you. Give it a shot, and if anything, it's nice to see Sid Haig perform in there. Rest in peace, man. We all miss you. Anyway, guys, this concludes today's video essay of Night of the Living Dead 3D, the other Night of the Living Dead remake. We'll see you guys next time. Huge, giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind-the-scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you.